from time to time I get asked questions about the HSC results that are published in the papers or online. Sometimes these tables claim to reveal the best school or the top school in the state. There's lots to say about these tables, but the first one is this. The comparison tables are incomplete. Let me explain. In the final years of school at Trinity, boys can choose to get a higher school certificate, which is the New South Wales based credential, that is the HSC, or they can get an International Baccalaureate Diploma, which is an international credential, the IB. About half our students choose the IB, which means that half our boys are not included in those HSC result tables. The good thing is that both the HSC and the IB are used to calculate an ATAR, which is the ranking used by universities for admissions. When we look at ATARs for both the HSC and the IB, it's evident that Trinity's academic results are outstanding. For example, in 2018, nine of our boys got a perfect score resulting in a 99.95 ATAR. 26 of our boys got an ATAR above 99. The median ATAR for boys across the state was 67.8, but at Trinity, the median ATAR was 88.95. Nearly half our boys got above 90. All of which is to say, the comparison tables are incomplete. There are lots of other reasons not to give too much weight to the comparison tables. The first one is, the tables use only a single measure. They measure the ratio of the band six results against the number of candidates. That's all. Can you imagine an analysis of the weather that only counted the number of rainy days in a month? Sure, it's a valid and objective measure, but you'd need more information. You'd want to know the total rainfall, the distribution of the rainfall, the maximums, the minimums, the averages. You'd want to know about temperature and wind. You'd want to know the month before and the month after. You'd want to know what happened last year. You'd want to see any long-term trends and you'd be looking for correlations and anomalies and patterns because that would give you a meaningful analysis. A single measure, how many rainy days, would be really limited. But that's what we get in the comparison tables. The comparison tables don't take context into account. If you only enrol high performing students, you should expect high performing graduates. Nothing to do with the quality of the school. The easiest way to raise average results is to remove low performing students. But as a comprehensive school, we don't do that. Comprehensive schools don't rank as highly as selective schools. Disadvantaged schools don't rank as highly as privileged schools. Rural schools don't rank as highly as urban schools. The tables lack context. And there are better ways to gauge the quality of a school than the tables. The quality of pastoral care, the extent of co-curricular opportunity, the nature of school culture and school climate, the responsiveness of the school to student need, the way the school shapes character, these things are things that really matter. And at Trinity, we aim to educate our boys in mind, body and spirit. I take it that no parent would be happy to suggest that the quality of their child could be captured in their HSC results. Why would we think that the quality of a school could be captured that way?